Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Arcarium. Our format is that Carrie and I prepare two questions for the other on a specific topic, and then we round robin have a conversation about that topic. Today's topic is holidays, because we all like to talk about holidays, the good, the bad, and the otherwise. Before we get into our topic, we are going to introduce ourselves. Carrie, can you tell everybody who you are? Hi, everyone. My name is Carrie Ganya, and I am a facilitator in a therapy called Family Constellation Therapy. I help people clean up an ancestral trauma so that they can move forward in their lives. And my name is Mark Edgar Stevens, and I am a clinical hypnotherapist. I provide coaching and consulting services to individuals, to small groups, nonprofits, and to organizations. Together, we are Arcarium. Carrie, do you want to go first with your question, or do you want me to go first today? I'll go first. Okay. So I feel like um, 2020, man, like the buzz of holidays is really, really weird this time of well, specifically in this time, I feel like normally we are all told September onward that the holidays are the best time of the year. So I am really curious when you are constantly being told either within your family system or environmentally going into stores and seeing decorations, when you're told to be happy and to celebrate the, the best time of year, what would you say to yourself or others if you weren't feeling it, let's say in 2020 with everything that's going on? How do you navigate that? So let me start with, I love the holidays. I love to see when the decorations all start, but I always get a sense of melancholy as well, this very thing that you're talking about. And so quite often what I see with clients, with friends, with family, is that feeling of, well, I, I have to enjoy it. I better enjoy it. This is you know, this is the most wonderful time of the year. And so I'm going to smile through it. I'm going to feel my way through it. And I am a big one about celebrate the truth of what you really feel. So when we feel that melancholy, the shortening of the days, all the things that start to happen at this time of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, it is okay. It's not only okay, it is good for us to go ahead and feel the truth of what we feel. If we are not, you know, feeling like celebrating because so many of our holidays got canceled, you know, our trick-or-treating is not happening, we're not getting together with family, we are not having all of the Christmas parties or the uh, holiday parties that happen in December, we're not going to get together and watch the ball drop uh, for you know the New Year holiday. It's okay. It's okay to say, you know what, I, I don't feel good. I don't, uh, you know, I'm not celebrating the way that I usually do. And since I'm not celebrating, I don't need to put on a happy face. I can actually journal. I can breathe deeply. I can, um, you know, sit quietly, uh, you know, sit quietly and just feel what it is. Uh, my mother used to make a joke about the song, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. And when it originally uh, appeared in, in film, uh, it was a film called Meet Me, Saint Louis, Meet Me in St. Louis and uh, Judy Garland sang it. And it's a sad song. Like, it's a really sad song, you know, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. And my mother said all she could ever imagine was someone sitting in a room all by themselves with like a little flag going, oh, I'm having a merry little Christmas, you know, <laughs> the image of Christmas, a, a merry little Christmas, um, it looked very sad, sounded very sad to her. And I think, you know, for those of us living in these times, COVID-19, I don't think it's all, you know, celebration and feeling good. And so I think we have to be at the truth of what we feel first, and then find the gratitudes of smaller holidays, find the gratitude of uh, you know, the pumpkin carving that you do with one other person or the small meal that you have with someone else. And you're grateful for the food that you have. You're grateful that you can still get together in some way. You're grateful that you can still have a, a tree that you light up, grateful for the one or two people that you may spend the holidays with. And I think that this is a time to really go into that and celebrate the gratitudes of the small things during this 2020 holiday season. I love that. That makes a lot of sense. So I will piggyback on that because I think you will expound upon. Um, my question is very similar to yours. During this time of the year, there is a thing called seasonal affective disorder, SAD, SAD. And just like you said, um, you know, I have, you know, clients that come to me and they're like, I'm just, you know, I'm not feeling it. And actually, the article that I read this week said one in four people actually feel this this feeling of SAD, SAD, um, this seasonal affective disorder. And women feel it more than men do. 
So my question to you is, though it is biological, because during this time of the year, the day in the Northern Hemisphere, the days are getting shorter, um, our ancestors used to fear the winter coming on because they didn't know who was going to make it through the winter, who was going to live through the winter. They actually told ghost stories around the time of the winter solstice right there near Christmas. And the, it, it was, you know, it was all in preparation for, Hey, we don't know what the future is going to be. These are uncertain times, just like COVID 2020. So here's my question for you. Is this, Effect this feeling, this sad feeling, this melancholy feeling that we get, is it primarily biological or is some of it tied into our generational ancestral links where those people, our ancestors, were actually afraid of the future, afraid of the shortened days, afraid of the day of the dead, you know, as we call it, afraid of this time? Does that get passed down? And if so, what can we do about it? I love that question because it makes me think of epigenetics. You know, we on a cellular level are carrying all of those fears that our ancestors carried, all of those anxieties, those traumas, fear of darkness, whatever that may be. And they have figured out that environment flips that those genes on or off. So how your brain interprets the environment, that gene goes, whoa, I have sad or I don't. And I'm from Seattle. Sad's a real thing. Like I worked with a guy years ago who had to have like the light and the lamp on his desk. It was a real thing. So I think it's biological, yes, but I think it's interesting to see based on environmental factors how that gene gets flipped on for, let's say it gets flipped on for you, but not for me. You know, it's really interesting. I didn't know this statistic about women. That makes a lot of sense to me because we obviously are wired to feel and to nurture. And so, yeah, that's really interesting to me. I think in terms of what to do, especially at the holidays, it gets tricky. I feel like I always miss my ancestors at the holidays. I lost all my grandparents within two years of each other in my 20s. And I, f I feel like I have to go into the feeling, the missing, the longing, the I wish I could talk to my grandma, feel it, and then honor them by shifting it, if that makes any sense, you know? Um, I don't wanna speak to if someone has SAD and is being has been diagnosed with SAD because I don't, I don't know that much about it. Um, and I think we have to be really careful of just like pull yourself out of it kind of thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I do know what you mean. And Carrie, if, if you would go a little bit farther um, with that, be, because, you know, if, if you had someone that you loved deeply, like you were talking about your grandparents, that dies during the holidays, unfortunately, every time the holidays come around, it's that feeling of, oh, this is when we lost this person that we loved so much. And, or if it was, if it was tragic, you know, God, you, know, God, you know, God forbid, if it was tragic, you remember it that way. And so it does affect those holidays. And so sometimes it's not the most wonderful time of the year for some people. My, my question to you is on the generational side, um, if, it's, if it goes back to all of those fears and everything, well, is, is there anything that we can do about it? Is there anything that you do in family constellation therapy? Does it come up? And, and if so, like what, what do you do about it? Yeah, that's a great question. Witness, witness, witness. Face it, that we all have those imprints. We have those stains on a cellular level of loss, early death, war, pandemics. And so we've all conditionally, generationally, have been taught not to feel, not to face put a smile on your face, go see Santa, all the things. And so in my work, it's really important to feel whatever it is that you're feeling and face it. And then that's honestly enough sometimes to shift, to shift it, you know, allow yourself to feel sad on Christmas if whatever trauma happened on that day, you know, but I feel like the more you actually step in and witness all of the pain that has come before, it gets easier to start releasing that from your own physical field. Carrie, you and I are similar in this way. Um, one of the things that I uh, always encourage uh, clients, friends, family to do is whatever the pain is or whatever the feeling is, no matter how uncomfortable it is, go into it because if you go into it, it's more likely that it's going to pass more quickly and you make room then for another feeling to come, you know, right behind it, especially if you put love, gratitude or forgiveness into 
uh, you know, into the practice of allowing yourself to feel the uncomfortable feelings. Um, I always uh, uh, um, use the analogy. It's like when you feel like you're going to vomit and you're like, oh, I just don't want to. Oh, I just don't want to. I just don't want to. And then you do. And then you feel better. You know, you feel better because you got out what needed, you know, didn't need to be there anymore. It's the same thing with emotions. Like, oh, I don't want to feel it. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to feel it. But if you will let yourself feel it, then you actually can get some relief from it. With that, you have another question for me. I do. I feel like I'm the one harping on 2020 in all our episodes, but I'm, I'm really curious if, you know, everything that is going on in the world right now and everything that we're experiencing and all the trauma that we're experiencing, have you seen any patterns with friends, family, clients around moving into the holidays? Yes. So the, the pattern is, especially at this particular time, so while we're filming this, while we're discussing this, we are in the last, you know, the last part of 2020. And people are getting tired of, of COVID. They're getting tired of the social distancing. They're getting tired of a lot of these things. And people want their holidays back. They want to get together in groups and they want to laugh and talk and love and, and do all the things that we do at the holidays. And so the pattern that I am seeing right now from many people, most people I would even say is, um, uh, is the feeling of, you know what, I'm, I'm willing to, to risk it. Um, I'm ready to get back to life as I knew it before. I think I'm going to go ahead and fly. Um, I haven't flown anywhere during the next, you know, the last seven months, eight months, and I'm getting ready to fly. I want to get out there and I want to do this. They want to get away from what is uncomfortable. And I completely understand it because so do I. Uh, on a very personal level, I am not going to run away from it. I'm actually going to run into it even more. Carrie, you and I have talked about it a bit. I am a social person. I am an extrovert, but I have really been enjoying this time to go into myself, you know, go inside, ask questions, be alone, do some of the things that I don't have time to do at, uh, or haven't had time to do in previous years. So with this COVID-19, I'm really truly on a daily basis doing my best, not always successful, but doing my best to put gratitude into this sequestered sort of feeling, to put love into this sequestered time, to forgive myself for the times that I um, am ungrateful for this time. And, and I'm not saying that we all need to go out and go, woo, COVID-19, you know, everything's great. Not that at all. But what are the blessings that we're getting from this? So the patterns that I'm seeing from people is that feeling of let's go back to life as usual. And I don't think that there's going to be life as usual really ever again. I think we're creating, you know, we keep hearing the word new normal. I think we are creating a new normal. We're creating a new way of moving forward. For many years, um, there are times when I've gotten together with a small group of friends at Thanksgiving and we say, everybody just bring one dish. And so if it's four people, it's four dishes. And we really enjoy those four dishes rather than it being a time of, of gorging ourselves. Um, you know, this year, uh, you know, a, a, a socially distanced six person pumpkin carving, you know, and, you know, you carve the pumpkins, you light the candle, you do your own little thing. And, you know, that's Thanksgiving. Christmas is going to be, you know, sitting quietly by a fire and just being grateful for, uh, for getting through 2020, really. So yeah, that's what the pattern is. It's run away from the feeling, run away from the discomfort. And I would strongly encourage run into it, stay with it, feel it, because the blessings that are coming from this particular time in our shared history, I do think that the blessings will be many. And I don't think we're going to see them, um, you know, necessarily tomorrow. But I think we will look back and go, this is what we got from this time. Because I think that opportunity always exists in every cataclysmic or traumatic event in our lives. Our job, I believe, is to sit in it, feel it, go into it, find the blessing, and then use it as fertilizer to be able to make life better moving forward, not only for ourselves, but for the people around us. Yeah, I love that, Mark. I, I think running headfirst into the feeling, whatever headfirst means to you as an individual, I think is the most powerful thing you can do to move forward. I really do. Because in my work, 99.9% .9 of my work is, you know, generational stuff that's stuck because no one dealt with it. And our bodies are holding on to all of those memories and that pain and that trauma. So definitely feel your feelings and then step forward. 
And Carrie, and I will go forward with that too. I also do think, you know, because it takes a lot of bravery to do it. And it also takes a lot of bravery to say, you know what, I'm going to step out and I'm going to do something a little different. So with that bravery, you know, there, people are finding ways to, I mean, you certainly are, you're, you're one of the people doing it. You know, you're, you're spending more time with family. Uh, you're back there. You drove up from Los Angeles to, um, you know, to Seattle, but you're taking your precautions and doing what you need to do. And I do think that there will be a part of that. Along with that may come some fear. And if fear comes up or trepidation or hesitation or whatever, or frustration or whatever it may, anger, whatever it may be, go ahead and feel all of it. I mean, it's an, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to feel. Which brings me to this, because I want to change the subject now with your second question. So, I know you to be a joyous person and I know you to be a loving person and I know you to be somebody that can truly celebrate, um, you know, celebrate the good times. So when it comes to joy, love, peace, gratitude, what do you love most about the holidays and why? And, you know, it's always a two-parter, tie that into generational tradition, like basically like the traditions of our ancestors that were joyful, that were really, you know, pleasant. What are your favorite things about the holidays that tie into those traditions and why? That's such an amazing question. I feel like as a little kid, I was so enamored by the magic of all of it because I just, I loved anything sparkly. I mean, I still do, but loved Santa, like loved the magic of all of it. But now looking back as an adult, I was like, oh, I loved the connection piece. I loved being able to see my grandparents and all my aunts, my uncles and cousins, and loved that everyone was getting together and laughing and having yummy food and sharing stories or sharing what they were grateful for. So I definitely feel like the connection piece for me is by far the biggest. And I think that can sometimes be difficult when, you know, all of those elders are gone. You know, what was the second part of your question? I got so enamored by the magic. You no, you did well. You did very, very you you answered it. My 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 what what I was tying in there is just the traditions of previous generations of our ancestors. Like what are those what are those generational or those those traditions that go back to the people we didn't even know, our great great grandparents, our great 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 grandparents, going back to the 16, 17, 1800s, you know, so often during this time, we see these movies of, oh, that's just what was happening in Victorian in England, that sort of thing. What are the traditions that have passed down that bring you the most joy, the most, um, the most peace, the most celebration that you look forward to every year that are connected generationally to the ancestors? That's a great question. I've, I've been missing my, my grandma a lot lately, and she was this tiny, tiny woman that had seven kids and went through a lot. I mean, tiny woman, but that woman, you would walk into her house and there would be food everywhere. I remember as when I first was able to drive and I would go see her by myself, I'd leave and she would put sandwiches or like a George Foreman grill in my bag because she thought that I wasn't eating enough. Like, so definitely like food is love in my family. And I have a massive family on my dad's side. So I think a lot of the traditions were around laughter. You know, we had just, there's just so many of us and so many cousins, I feel like at the early part of my life within our traditions, it was just about presence and kind of going from one thing to another because there were so many kids. And then as I got older, as like a teenager, my grandma was like, why don't we switch this up? And like, she started gag gifts and it was just, I just remember everyone like laughing and like bending over and it just, it was such a joyful time, such a joyful time. And it was, it really taught me to like less is more, you know what I mean? Like just the simple things can be so extraordinary, which I think plays into where we're at right now. Oh. Carrie, similar to to what you're saying, I, I, I think that the holidays got better for me once I stopped the tradition of presence. Uh, the idea that you had to get everybody that you loved the perfect present and you had to run around and spend December in a mall. Like that is the thing that I least want to do. No one needs to get me a present. I don't need to get anyone else a present. The present is your presence. The present is the food that we share, the laughter that we share. I don't need to open up 20 things under a Christmas tree. I really, really, and the older, maybe this is something to do with getting older. The older I get, the more I enjoy 
simple holidays, the simpleness. I wrote a uh, song last year called uh, Simply Christmas. And it's just the, just the simpleness of Christmas. That's what I long for you know, during the holidays. I like the simplicity. For me, I was going to say the thing that ties me to the ancestors that I don't know and to previous generations is the music. As soon as I start hearing the music at Christmas time, and it's not the new music, it's not the pop music, I like all of those old, um, they're, you know, they're really, they're the religious songs, they're the church songs. And it's, if you listen to them, many of them, most of them, I think, maybe almost all of them are in these minor keys. They have these, you know, what child is this who lay to rest? Oh, little town of Bethlehem. You know, the, just the, the, the structure of the music has a, sort of a melancholy and a sadness in it, but it also has a beauty. It's what I call sad beauty. And in that sad beauty, it allows me to feel what I'm really feeling, which is a beautiful sadness at that time of the year, because there is a lot that's beautiful and there's a lot that's, that's sad or that's melancholy. And that music, I feel like, ties me to the ancestors that I've never met that were singing those songs, listening to those songs, feeling the same things that I was feeling. And so when I feel that rush of emotion that comes up with this music that I love so much that starts playing every year, and I believe me, I, I start playing it the day after Thanksgiving and I like for it to keep playing and I keep it going all the way through to the 1st of January, that music ties me to all the ones who came before and it, it, it ties me even to, to childhood. And when I say ties, I want to be very careful I'm saying this, ties me in the most beautiful way because it makes me honor, respect, and love where we've come from. Because as we're seeing in 2020, it, it is so uncertain. It is so unpredictable. And that must have been the things that they were feeling back then. Such uncertainty, such unpredictability. They, they didn't have Google and the internet and they didn't, their, their medicine was not as, as, uh, as, as far along as it is today. People didn't know if they were going to make it through these times. That music ties me to that feeling in a beautiful way. It's honor, it's respect, and it is gratitude that we, maybe not in 2020, but that we have a little bit more say so about what's going to happen in our lives. I love that. Music is such a portal to memories, to feeling, to access the unknown. So I love that. That makes a lot of sense. So Carrie, here is what we are going to do. If uh, anybody out there that's listening has a comment, you have a topic that you would like for us to talk about or cover, please write to us at talktoarcarium at gmail.com. That's T-A-L-K, the number two, arcarium at gmail.com. And to send us out on the holidays, Carrie, will you say something, anything about the holidays? What's the last thing that you would like to share with everybody in terms of holidays? Just find connection, even if it's connection to the sadness, because that will pass. But allow yourself to open up and connect. Family, friends, music, feel it and really enjoy yourselves.